Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 with another exhibition match, 2v2. This time, 400 and Exploit versus Edible and Sergeant Smuggler. And if any of these names aren't familiar, then that's because they are new. Although, Sergeant Smuggler is also known as Droppy. But everyone else is pretty much who they say they are. None of the name others have obvious aliases. So that being said, we can just get into the game right away. So it's on Red Comet, which is a very typical map. We see it all the time when it comes to, especially 2v2, but in general, it's a very, very popular map. Basically very flat. But yeah, we have that. So we have over in the southwest, we have Edible going for Air Factory. Sergeant Smuggler has they haven't chosen their factory yet. While Exploit going for light vehicles and 400 going for Hovercraft. Hovercraft again! Well, actually, not really. Hovercraft meta has been pretty weak recently. Or at least it seems like it has been. I haven't noticed a lot of Hovercraft play in recent time. Light Vehicle still seems to be fairly popular as usual. Cloaky buff for Sergeant Smuggler. So Air Cloaky versus Light Vehicle and Hovercraft. Certainly interesting. I've not really seen a lot of... I mean, I've seen some Cloaky use in this map. But definitely vehicles have the advantage. And Vehicle Hovercraft just seems like it will be a strong combination. See how it works, though. I mean, 400 is the one behind the... 400 being the strongest by LO player is the one behind the hovercrafts. This is going to be interesting, to say the least. So we're going to have... Well, Raven going down over to 400's base. Seeing the hovercraft factory right away, probably going to go for the, either the metal extractor or the lotus. No, going for the radar instead. No, metal extractor. There we go. Surprised they were going for the radar instead. Yeah, the metal extractor makes a lot more sense. Slowing down 400's construction. Because that is... 400 is the biggest threat for Edible and Sergeant. I mean... Exploit 1301 LO. I mean, I don't know if they're seeing the LO if they're using Deluxe Player List, but they probably figure 400 is the bigger threat. And they are going for them first, or at least Edible's going for the for 400 first. Sergeant Smuggler hasn't really built much yet. They were just going out, I think, going out to deal with Exploit a bit. And now Exploit coming in with the Scorcher and actually dealing a decent amount of damage. In fact, managing to get a few good shots and closing up all of Sergeant Smuggler's solar collectors and taking on a metal extractor on top of that. Sergeant Smuggler building up some defensive glaives, but... Pfft. Okay, the Scorcher destroyed by the metal extractor explosion itself. And in come the Ravens to help deal with this. Getting... No, not even hit with that. Just getting rid of the commander. I thought that would get hit by the dagger. I thought the dagger would hit it, but it did not. However, the maze coming in and should be able to get rid of Edible's commander, although it will go down in time. Never mind that. Thanks to the Raven. Although I think Edible's commander would have barely stayed alive long enough to kill it. The Mace Rush has been thwarted. 400 knocks is not going to be able to win that easily. Well, in the center of the map, Sergeant Smuggler getting some revenge for the loss of that Metal Extractor. Taking on a Metal Extractor of their own with their Glaives. Missing the Mason, though. Sergeant Smuggler did not get that Mason. I think they might have... I think they saw the Mason. Well, at any rate, they didn't go for the Mason, and they are not going for the Mason. They're going straight for the main base. Not paying much attention to the Glaives, which is a mistake at this point, because that's a... Fair chunk of change being donated straight into Exploit's base. I mean, that's 26. I mean, it's not a huge amount of money. It's 50 some odd metal. But at this stage in the game, that's that's no that's not a small deal. That means something. I mean, it's not compared to losing that metal extractor. I mean, it's a bit of an out of the way metal extractor, so a bit harder to replace. But it's still within Exploit's territory pretty securely. Well, in come four daggers looking to deal a bit of damage into Edible's base from 400. 400 continuing to build up more and more daggers, going entirely for daggers, while Exploit goes for a combination of Cratcher and Scorcher. Probably too many Crashers. I would think generally about four or five is a good idea because the Ravens are going to be swapped out. Like, Edible's probably going to swap for ground fairly soon, within the next two or three minutes. So by the time the Crashers even start being built, I would not be surprised if we saw a ground factory coming up from Edible. I'd be a little surprised they aren't expanding that quickly, but I wouldn't be extremely surprised. And Sarge and Smuggler also not expanding that much. It's actually a bit of a weakness here. Exploit expanding the most has the strongest economy by far. Oh yeah, they're expanding a ton, as is 400. 400 is... Team Blue is doing a very good job here, while Team Red is keeping in their base, being aggressive, dealing some damage, doing a lot of raiding, but not actually expanding all that much. I'm fairly surprised Sarge and Smuggler isn't expanding. Even though they have the Warriors, they have the ground presence. They don't need... They don't need to worry so much... With the air presence, it's a bit difficult to keep map control, just because you have to move the ravens in and out, or whatever you're using, usually ravens. But whatever area it's using, they have to be moved in and out. They can't just stay there and deal damage. They have to go in, deal damage, leave. They have to go back to reload. 
As a result, it becomes difficult to maintain solid map control. On the other hand, with with clone key bots, it's nowhere near as difficult, especially when you have a bunch of warriors like this. And it looks like 400... Okay, 400 just hasn't taken anything. Crashers have actually been built. Exploit managed to get a couple crashers up, and the Ravens are going to have a harder time getting out as a result. Assuming the crashers don't get caught in this defender and defender nest pretty soon from the looks of it. Oh yeah, defender nest for sure. Edible building up a whole line of defenders right at this outside. Not a huge defender nest, mind you. But it is still something. Well, exploits over to the north has started getting their crashers built up. They... Okay, they're getting weak on energy though. They need more energy. They need more solar plants. Probably, well, solar plants definitely. That's the biggest thing they need right now. Get solars. Get some caretakers over here. Build up that factory. Get, really push the resources in the factory. Because right now... Stars and Smuggler and Edible are not actually losing out. And there we go. There's the Heavy Tank Factory. There is the ground switch I was looking for. And like I said, that's right when the crashers start coming in. Like There's one crash that has been built of that 14. And that's right as the Heavy Tank Factory is built. Like The Heavy Tank Factory just gets built. And that's when the crasher just gets out. Now at this point, there is a pretty nice attack here. It's probably going to go for the factory and... Actually, no. Is that scouting out? the heck? That's not even attacking anything. Going for the Crasher, but that was not the best option. I'm a little surprised that there wasn't a whole lot of scouting going on. I mean, the reconnaissance is being done by the Ravens. Now, Stars and Smuggler not really moving in for a follow-up. They do have their commander trying to deal with the Scorchers, but that's working out the other way. The Scorchers getting a dive on Smuggler's commander. I think Smuggler will survive this, but it will be just barely. The Warriors trying to come in to save it, and no, actually, Paralysis... Oh, just barely hits with a stun gun. Just barely kills that Scorcher with about 70 health left. That was extremely close. Way too close for comfort. I mean, they got through that, but any follow-up that exploit has is going to kill it. It's just that exploit doesn't have any follow-ups. They're focusing so much on crashers now, and like I said, heavy tank switch is happening. The heavy tank switch is happening, and it's making those crashers totally useless. And as soon as the crashers are built, then we'll see the ravens come in again. Now, 400, who I've been ignoring a lot of this time, They've been building up flails. They've been building up daggers. They've actually been building a pretty powerful army. In fact, they have one of the strongest armies here. Not that much. They do have the strongest army. They also have very strong energy infrastructure. I mean, overall, the resource advantage is definitely for 400 and exploit. Because like I said, from the start, they were expanding a lot more. And at this point, they have the entire map. Edible trying to take the southeast, but or the south in general, southeast of their base. But that's not going to work. They have no territory here. They can't really push in. They have no good staging ground to actually take these metal extraction points. And they can attack with the Ravens, but really, as I've mentioned before, the counter to early air... I mean, in 1v1, the counter to early air is mass expansion. And in 2v2, if both players are mass expanding and the other team just isn't, then it's problematic. Now, however, Sergeant... or rather, Exploit just loses their commander. But even then, that's not the biggest deal. <laughs> it's nowhere near the stage where that matters anymore. If anything, Edible and Sergeant Smuggler, they need to worry about the commanders. They have half the economy, and they lose their commander. That's a third of their economy gone with the commander's death. But for 400 and exploit, they don't care. I mean, they have like 30, 35 metal without worrying about their commander. It's not a big deal for them. Like, if 400's commander goes down, that's 30 metal. Okay, that's still twice what Edible and Sarge's Smuggler have. That's still more than what they have combined. And 400 and exploit are basically going in for the kill. See, I'm a bit surprised Sarge's Smuggler and Ed they just didn't expand at all. They had. They had an early advantage as well. They had the Ravens. They were getting a bit of map presence as a result of that. Not map control. Like I said, they can't stay in place. But at least the commander and the workers could have gone about the map, building up metal extractors. Because that's the thing that air can actually do pretty effectively, is kind of deal with the fact that people are mass expanding, if they mass expand themselves. That we didn't see. And Sergeant Smuggler, despite going for Cloakie, hasn't really gone for much of an assault either. They have a lot of warriors, but they aren't moving out at all. And now there's realizing they need to push out, but it's way too late. If we look at the way it's set up right now, I mean, the south side 400 is pretty... Actually, the daggers would go down fairly quickly to the warriors. But the warriors are probably going to attack kind of northward or centerward. Centerward would be a nice nice little cut here, nice spear move, but at the same time, they'd probably get surrounded. And the main issue is more the Scorchers than it is anything else. Now, the Scorchers are going to the north, and the warriors are there to meet them. So Sergeant Smuggler does have that dealt with. And going out, scouting with a glaive to see where they can deal the most damage. Finding that Crasher and not actually much else. In fact, the glaive going back. Seriously, that, that glaive 
That glaive lives to die. It's supposed to go out there and get itself killed to figure out what the heck's going on. But at this point, Sergeant Smugglers feel the need to do that. And knows enough with radar just to go with the sharpshooters to deal with the defenses. Good choice. Getting rid of the defenses, especially that Stardust with the sharpshooters, that's the most efficient option. Especially since it should one-shot the Stardust as well. And no, not quite. It's because of the weirdness in the zero K damage mechanics. It doesn't quite one-shot the Stardust. But it looks like Exploit, I was actually wrong. Exploit is able to make use of those crashers. And like I said, Sarge and Smuggler does not quite realize how behind they are. I mean, really, Edible and Sarge and Smuggler are very much behind it. 400, they have an army that's as valuable as Edible and Sarge and Smuggler combined. That just really, that's not going well. That's really not the situation that you want to be in. And that's unfortunately for Edible and Sergeant Smogger, the situation they're in. And it looks like Edible going with the Warriors, going for going for the kill. We'll be able to go to the Stardust as soon as they get in range. There we go. One shot takes care of the Stardust. But the Scorchers are still going to be a problem. The Sharpshooters are nowhere near there. And the Warriors dealing a decent amount of damage. But these Slashers are being a pain for them. Scorchers, however, do go down. Two of the Warriors go down in the process, though. All the Warriors go down in the process. Not even a single Slasher dies because of that Warrior attack. And at this point, Sergeant Smuggler has lost what army they have. They don't have the army production rate that Exploit 400 do. I mean, Exploit 400 both have caretakers just pumping their factories full of metal. I mean, 400 actually building... Okay, building a pylon, that makes sense. thought that was a storage for some reason. But no, it's a pylon. It's exactly what you want to build at this stage. I mean, 400 is going to get a massive boost from that overdrive. I mean, they've already, like I said, got a very powerful economy. There's not much more to be said about that. And even then, the overdrive is not huge, but it doesn't matter. They just have most of the map. I mean, Edibles managed to inch in on the south side, deal a decent amount of damage, use the Pillager as well to just take care of things. I mean, just creeping with the Pillager. But at this point, Exploit is a lot they can work with. They're basically going to take out Sergeant Smuggler pretty soon. The Sharpshooter is doing a nice job. And it looks like, oh, Sergeant Smuggler just leaves. Edible gaining control of everything. Edible might actually be able to go for a comeback with this control. Edible being the stronger player, probably has more control, more micromanagement skill, should be able to at least deal a bit more damage that way. But even then, they are behind. Like, Edible has as much metal as 400 and exploit individually. No real change to the story so far. Over to the south, Edible's commander is getting heavily attacked, and Edible is losing... Well, Edible's original commander, I should say. Edible loses that commander with that four metal. However, some of the Panthers actually getting some nice lucky deaths, surprisingly enough. Not where we're able to take great advantage of that. None of the halvers ultimately go down, and that's... Although, one of them does get stunned again. Nice, Nicely placed Faraday here, right in the center of the defender nest. But even then, those halberds were not attacking when they got stunned out. That one was. That one definitely lost that, but still 400's commander moving in. Level 5 commander, tons of light particle beam, shield, auto repair, range improvements, damage improvements. Good luck dealing with that battle comm with nearly 10,000 HP. 400 had the time and resources to do that. That says a lot about the way this game progressed. So once again, another rather one-sided game, unfortunately. Hopefully the last game for tonight will be a bit more even, but yeah, this one definitely not going well for Edible. Edible is pushing back valiantly, but even with the sharpshooter, they just aren't getting the hits they need. They aren't getting the shots. I mean, this commander is just not going down. The sharpshooter missing once again because of radar drift. They, they are now, are they finally getting the right target? There we go, finally getting the right target. We see the the jump in little targeting reticle right there. And that sharpshooter getting revealed, about to die before, not before getting in, yeah, another shot off. Gets a shot off, actually hits. Makes his life at least somewhat worthwhile, but it doesn't matter because Edible has resigned and Sergeant Smuggler is back in the game? Okay, apparently Sergeant Smuggler and Edible are now playing 0k tag team. I didn't know that was a thing, but that is definitely what has just happened right now. So Sergeant Smuggler back in the game as Edible has just resigned. So I guess if Sergeant Smuggler resigns, they tag Edible back in. I'm not sure how that works. Honestly, never seen that before, but 400, doesn't matter, moving in, will be able to pretty... Oh, oh, I see what happened. Sergeant Smuggler didn't... Oh, they did surrender. I saw the surrender right there. They had surrendered, and then they didn't... Okay. Yeah, they... They resigned. They gave all units by resign, and then they... Gave all units to Sergeant Smuggler. Okay, well that is... 
That doesn't work. I mean, at this point, the game has been over for some time now. Sergeant Smuggler, I think, might not even be active, come to think of it. They aren't really doing anything. So yeah, that's game. The next game will be between Edible and Magman. Once again, we see Edible with versus 400 and Corvus Corax. That'll be on Avalanche and it'll be up in a couple minutes. Actually, Sergeant Smuggler is not away from keyboard. Doesn't really matter though, because about to lose their commander and with that, losing basically everything because they only had the commander for their economy. That is game. That is the map. And that is basically it. There's not much more to say. Yeah, hope you enjoyed that as much as one could. I mean, it wasn't the most even game, but hey, it was a 2v2 game, which is the tournament on the weekend. We should be seeing much better games because there's those are games that are really for something. These are just practice. These are exhibition matches. I mean, it's kind of the way it goes. You have matches that are just played just for the sake of playing games, and then you get games that, no, I mean, not the perfect games. But the tournament games, oh boy, those get really exciting. So I'm very, I'll be very excited to see what happens. Hopefully we'll have Sackdoth and or Floris with me to help co-commentate. And should be a lot of fun. Like I said, the next one is coming up. Well, is this done yet? Are these things done yet? Okay, this is done. I don't even know why I'm even paying attention anymore. So yeah, the next one on Avalanche will be up in just a moment. I guess I'll let it end just for the sake of having it officially end. There we go. Ends. Wins. And now I... And that's it. So, thank you for watching. I'll have another one in a moment. Like I said, it is the Edible Island Magman versus 400 Chorus Corax on Avalanche. I'll be up in about half a minute. Stay tuned for that.